The products that you're going to see me review today, the iFlight ProTech 25 and ProTech 35, were sent to me by iFlight. I did not purchase them. I have not received any monetary compensation in exchange for this video, and iFlight has had no creative control or input or review on this video before it's released. Once upon a time, Andy Shen created this, a Cinewhoop, and it had some qualities that made it very good for certain types of flight. And then Cinewhoop started to get popular and everybody started making them like this. And in ways that we're going to talk about in this video, this style of Cinewhoop doesn't actually have most of the characteristics that make Andy Shen's Cinewhoop so freaking interesting. So what iFlight has done is say, the heck with it. Let's not pretend like we're building an Andy Shen style Cinewhoop. Let's just make these things be what they actually are turning out to be. And that's why we're looking at today the iFlight ProTech 35 and ProTech 25. These things <sighs> fill some of the same jobs that a Cinewhoop might but in ways that a Cinewhoop won't, with longer flight times, more power, and better maneuverability. But do they actually accomplish that? And what do you give up along the way? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. In order to understand what iFlight is trying to do with the ProTech 25 and ProTech 35, we have to go back to what is, at least for me, the original Cinewhoop, the Shendrones Squirt. And one of the things that defined the Cinewhoop category is this. These are not just prop guards, but they are also ducts. Prop guards mean that you can fly the Cinewhoop close to an actor. They are commonly used for commercial shoots. You can fly it close to a you know, person riding a skateboard or a mountain bike, and you don't have to worry quite as much if you're going to crash into them. Or you can fly it close to an expensive car, and you don't have to worry about damn, maybe, maybe you should worry a little bit. So they're safer for flying indoors and close to objects and people. But the ducts do a little bit more than that. You can see that these ducts have this kind of flared shape. And in fact, in the original squirt, Andy took four inch props and cut them down to a bullnose design so that they would gouge into the TPU duct and cut a channel into the duct. And, and because the prop was literally riding right up against the duct, you got this effect where uh, efficiency is basically increased. Now, if we look closely at this Shendrone Squirt, this one was built by Rotoriot. Uh, and in fact, they'll build it for you and sell it to you. I'll put a link in the video description if you want. Me and Paul Nurkula actually did a build video for this. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the video description if you want to check it out. But if you look closely at this Shendrone Squirt, you can see that we have already started to deviate from Andy Shen's original design. This is not a cut down four inch bullnose prop. It is a standard three inch prop. And you can see that it does not ride right up against the duct. It has a couple millimeters of space where it is separate from the wall of the duct. And actually just that little two, one to two millimeters of space is enough to basically completely negate the efficiency advantages of the ducts. And we can see this trend of building Cinewhoops that kind of aren't really Cinewhoops continue if we look at this, the iFlight Bumblebee. This is iFlight's quote unquote Cinewhoop. And you can see that there is no longer a flared design at the top of the duct. And we, do, we don't really, it's really just a prop guard at this point. And the uh, prop does not ride very close to the duct. So what have we really got here? What we've got here is a heavy, underpowered, three inch quadcopter with prop guards that are way bigger than they need to be. If they were ducts, they'd be the right size, but they're not, they're not acting as ducts. So what if we just said the heck with it, let's stop trying to make this thing look like a Cinewhoop. Let's give up on the ducts and let's just put some prop guards on a high performance quadcopter that can carry a GoPro. And in fact, why don't we just give up on the idea that we have to use three inch props? What if we went to like three and a half inch props or two and a half inch props and saw what happened? And that is where we come to the iFlight ProTech 35 and ProTech 25. Now I want to look at the ProTech 35 first because I think it's the more interesting of the two. And the first thing you're going to notice about it is that it has three and a half inch props instead of the 
typical three inch props you'd find on a Cinewhoop. For the time being, there's not a lot of selection in three and a half inch props. That's not a very common prop size and you may need to be buying the iFlight three and a half inch props. But that extra half inch of prop does make a big difference compared to a three inch Cinewhoop. You're gonna get more thrust you're going to get longer flight time. Larger props tend to be more efficient and they're going to be quieter. They're going to be quieter because they're larger and therefore they're spinning at a lower RPM. And they're going to be quieter because, as I said, iFlight has given up the pretense of having ducts. The ducts weren't doing anything anyway on most of these. So you may as well just use smaller prop guards. And when you get rid of those ducts, then you get quieter props. It's a little hard to get this in shot with the prop guards in place, but the motors are Zing 2203.5. And this is another place where the ProTech 35 differs significantly from the Cinewhoops that came before it. They tend to use motors around 1407, 1406, 1408, something like that. And these are taller and narrower motors. We're finding that for a lot of scenarios, the thinner wider pancake style motors give better performance, um, especially when torque and prop response is what's needed. iFlight has done an amazing job of making all of their quadcopters super easy for beginners to work with. So they include stickers all over the dang thing, like this sticker, which shows where to where the bind button for the Crossfire receiver is. And you just peel it off and press that button and you're ready to go. Um, there's another sticker that warns you not to put, not to plug in the battery without installing the uh, antennas for the air unit first. By the way, if you are using a DJI air unit or Caddx Vista, they are fairly tolerant to being powered up without antennas. They have protection and they won't immediately destroy themselves. The analog video transmitters, you never want to power them up without the antennas installed or they'll just destroy themselves. That's a very common beginner mistake to make and it's super cool that iFlight just puts a sticker right on the XT60 to help prevent you from doing that. There's a sticker here showing where the bind button for the DJI Air Unit is, and it is accessible with a pokey device that can get in there. The frame is not a little in the way, but it's, it's accessible. And there's a sticker here on the prop guard reminding you that iFlight ships all of their bind and fly quads with angle mode permanently enabled so that pretty much no matter how you set up your controller, you're gonna start out in angle mode. And they figure that if you're a rank beginner who doesn't know what to do, better to start you in angle mode. And if you wanna fly in acro mode, you have to be at least smart enough to change the modes tab in beta flight and activate that for yourself. There are a couple things I could nitpick just because I wouldn't be doing my job as a reviewer if I didn't. Uh, the ProTech 35 comes with the full size air unit and that means it has an onboard DVR with an SD card, but the SD card, it's kind of hard for me to show you this on camera, but the SD card slot is right here, right here. And you can see it, you basically are gonna need a tweezers or something to install that SD card. Um, the USB port on the other hand is relatively accessible. Um, you do, however, have to stick the USB cable up through the prop, so it's in the way of the prop. And since you have to plug in the quadcopter in order to plug it, in order to get the air unit USB to work, it does mean you will be potentially, like, I, mean, it's, I just don't like having anything in the way of the props when it's plugged in. I guess that's probably not the end of the world if you were to chop a USB cable, but probably most people aren't gonna take off their prop every time they plug in the air unit. And the USB port for the flight controller is here. I'm not even sure you can see that. And it actually comes with a right angle adapter. So there's actually a USB plug right here, easily accessible, but the first time I forgot I for, sometimes I forget that I'm plugged into my computer and I snatch the quadcopter off the desk and leave it plugged in and it ripped it apart. So um, if I were you, I would consider installing a, well, I was gonna say I'd consider installing a magnetic USB adapter, but I'm not actually sure you could fit one up in there. Uh, so I guess just don't be a doofus like me and try to, and just you need to get a replacement one of these. Now with the ProTech 25, iFlight have gone the other direction. You see, the original three inch Cinewhoops were designed to carry full size GoPros, but today we have naked GoPros and the Insta360 SMO 4K camera, which are full, full fledged GoPros, but they weigh about say 25 or 30 grams. And since they're so much lighter, maybe we don't need those three inch props. Maybe we could go all the way down to 2.5 inch props. And that's exactly what they've done. 
the motors are 1404 in size, and we've actually seen these exact same size of motors on the long range four inch builds, but in this case, we're spinning a two and a half inch prop instead of a four inch prop. So the KV is up around 5,000, 5,500 KV, as opposed to being down around 3,800 or 4,000 KV for those long range four inch builds. The Protec 25 comes with Cadex Vista instead of the full size air unit. Here is the USB plug right down here. Once again, accessible through the prop hole, but you can get a USB plug into there. And the USB port for the flight controller is here on the bottom. And in this case, it is mounted directly to the flight controller. There is no right angle adapter to break if you accidentally pull it out the wrong way. Speaking of flight controllers, both of these guys come with a 25 millimeter size toothpick style all-in-one flight controller where the flight controller and the ESC are built into the same board. So there's no stack, there's no separate ESC or flight controller here, and there's no pins or wires to break or go wrong. The Protec 35 comes with the iFlight Beast H7 or F7? I'm not actually, I, I have to check. It's the iFlight Beast and it is an F7 slash H7 uh, with a 45 amp ESC. The Protec 25 comes with an F4 based uh, flight controller with a 20 amp ESC. One thing to keep in mind is the Protec 25 is only rated up to 4S voltage. The Protec 35 is rated up to 6S, although it's designed, the motor KV is designed for 4S. I have had a few people ask, well, what if I want to run it on 6S and maybe run it with a throttle limit or something like that? Neither of these flight controllers has a voltage regulator for the air unit or the Vista. Interestingly, the Vista is good up to 6S, but the flight controller in the Protec 25 is not. And the Protec 35, the air unit is not good up to 6S. And because the flight controller doesn't have a regulator in it, if you try to run the Protec 35 on 6S, you'll fry your air unit. So don't do that. Or get a separate regulator and install it if you really want to do that for some reason, but I don't know why you would. Now, one of the selling points of the Protex is that they achieve better performance at lighter weight than a traditional Cinewhoop. So let's see how that compares. This is a, the Shendron Squirt. It does have a full-size DJI air unit in it, and it has uh, 1507 motors, and it comes in at 323 grams. This is the iFlight Bumblebee. It also has a full-size air unit in it, and 1507 sized motors. It comes in at 326 grams, pretty close. This is the Protec 35. It has larger motors and larger props and also a full size area, 361 grams. So we didn't save any weight there, although presumably we're more than making up for that weight with performance. We'll see when we fly it. And the Protec 25 is 200 grams iFlight usually does a really good job of setting up their bind and flight quadcopters with good high performance and safe beta flight settings. But I always like to browse through and see if there's anything I would tweak. I should also say that iFlight has a help desk website and a Google Drive with con updated configuration dumps and a whole bunch of other information about their quads. And there's a very good chance there's an updated config dump for this very quad that I have not applied. I want to acknowledge that I'm about to go fly this on the stock factory settings because I figure that's what most people are going to do. But whenever you get an iFlight quad, you should at least go look at the iFlight Google Drive and the iFlight help desk and see if there's any updated information because sometimes there might be a little bit of a tuning issue or something and they'll have an updated config uh, and I'll put a link to all that stuff down in the video description. If you've got the iFlight Protec 25, please be aware that there is an issue with the ESC that you need to be aware of. You need to flash different firmware to the ESC than it ships with, at least as of today. Uh, I'll put a link to a video that explains what's going on there uh, down in the video description. If you have the Protec 35, you're fine. You're not affected. Well, all right, it's time to put this guy in the air, and I'm going to start with the Protec 35. I got to say, I'm pretty excited to give this a try. I've flown Cinewhoops before with GoPros on them, and they just struggle with the weight. I'm going to bet that these three and a half inch props do a way better job with the weight of this. This is a GoPro Hero 8 you're looking at right now. Let's find out. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to take a few of you off, and that is I'm going to fly this Cinewhoop aggressively, more like a freestyle quadcopter. And that ticks people off because they're like, that is not the point of a Cinewhoop. And I know that. 
but I always like to push these quads just to see how they perform, if they fall in their face or if they kind of hang in there. And in the beginning, I am noticing it, it definitely is a little heavy and underpowered compared to like a five inch freestyle quad, but it's doing way better than a typical Cinewhoop. I am lower in the throttle. I feel like I have more power to push it for speed and to pull out of dives or as I'm descending to get on the throttle. Let's do a little dive here. It's definitely heavy and a little underpowered. I'm even kind of a little impressed with the prop wash oscillation there. Let's do another dive. That was not bad. It climbs, it flings a little bit. This is really, oh wow. That would mean not a lot, of, it didn't get all unsettled with prop wash oscillation there. This is not bad. Let me do a little speed run here and see how the battery hang. Oh, we'll, we'll drop there. Oh, it even, oh, there we go, okay. So that's not really a criticism of us of a Cinewhoop. It, they, they really struggle in sharp turns like that. It got really out of sorts. That's just not what they're made to do. I knew I would find the limit and now I found it. And now we'll fly it more like a Cinewhoop. And a Cinewhoop is gonna be flown smoothly. It's gonna be flown slowly, probably. It's gonna be flown in proximity to obstacles. We'll do some indoor flying too. Let's just see if we can do some of this Cinewhoopy style flying. Oh, I had to climb there a little aggressively. It's definitely, it's moving quickly. More quickly than I would really expect. Oh, we're down to 3.5 volts already. Isn't that something? So one of the things you're gonna notice is as I, oh yeah. As I get closer to those surfaces, the prop wash from these larger props is affecting me. And that's true for every Cinewhoop, for every quadcopter, but it's especially true for ducted designs and uh, the larger the props, the larger the area where that's gonna happen. I get into, it's, see how I'm getting sucked into the wall? I didn't do that with my sticks. Now I'm getting pushed away and just buffeted around. And as I try to line up this shot, you see it, it gets, now I'm stuck. And I'm down. Mm, mm. Yeah, it's really tough. Do you see the motor surge there? I didn't do that. That was just it reacting to its own prop wash. So maybe ultra tight, slow gap shooting. I even tried to get a little run at it. Cause sometimes if you're having this problem where you're getting sucked into the wall, you get a little more speed and you can kind of fly through it. But no. Mm -mm. So it definitely feels like the place where the Protect 35 is happiest is in a little bit more open environment, maybe chasing vehicles or something like that, faster cruising. It definitely feels good to fly this way as long as you don't fling it too sharply into the turns. Like you can see, I'm turning fairly sharply here, but I'm not going nutso like a race turn. As long as you don't turn it too sharply, it stays pretty well composed but in a, this tighter indoor environment like the barn, it definitely felt like it was struggling. It feels very good out here though. And we gotta land and take the battery off. Hey, wait, where am I? <laughs> now it's time to fly the Protec 25 and that brings us to a little bit of a problem. You see the Protec 25 is it's so small. You would think it would be designed to fly with a naked GoPro or a camera like the Insta360 SMO 4K, which is a naked, a quote unquote, naked high definition camera. And sure enough, it can. You can also, I couldn't believe this, you can also fly the Protect 25 with a full size GoPro on it. And isn't that too heavy? Yeah, for a quad this small, that's way too heavy. But they show it with a USB, to, uh, to a balance lead connector that you can plug into your battery's balance lead and then you leave the battery out of the GoPro and then it's lighter. But I, that didn't come in my kit. So maybe it was supposed to come but it wasn't included or maybe it's just sold separately. So here's how I have worked around these issues. Here is our Protec 25 and I have 
<laughs> strapped a GoPro to the top of it. There is no battery in the GoPro. And obviously we will not be recording that GoPro's footage. We'll be working off the high definition DVR. But this will let us see how the quadcopter flies with the weight of a full-size GoPro with no battery in it. And, uh, you know, see if that actually lives up to its claim. Unlike the uh, Protec 35, I'm not just gonna go bonkers on this one with this weight on it. It, um, I, mm, I'm not as high in the throttle as I thought I would be. It is, you could definitely feel the weight. It feels a little sluggish in the turns. That's fine for a Cinewhoop though. It's, it's doing okay. It's actually doing okay. It doesn't feel ridiculously sluggish or it's like you could tell the weight's there, but I'm, I'm a little impressed. Let's try a punch. Battery is sagging. Oh, wow. I mean, it caught itself there, even with the weight of the full-size GoPro on it. Okay, I'm, I'm convinced you could carry a full-size GoPro with no battery if you wanted to. Let's see how it handles an area like going in here. Let's see how it slows down and Oh, oh. A little wiggle there. Let's see if I can get through this, this gap that I was struggling with before. Am I gonna get sucked into the wall? See, I'm, f I'm definitely feeling that I'm getting close to something, but I'm not getting sucked into the wall the same way I was on the four inch. Try again. Little unstable, cl that close to the wall. It feels better, but it's still not. I mean, I guess that's true for any, any Cinewhoop. Let's see if I can get this. Okay, and, oh well. I mean, I did get through it. I might like a little less, oh gracious. I was not happy about that. I might like, oh, uh-oh. Where's my GoPro? <laughs> Where's my GoPro? Oh, I lost it earlier. I must have lost it way earlier. GoPro. Where are you, GoPro? Like, I hope it fell off in one of these crashes and not out in the yard. Oh, man. Oh, that's an expensive, that is gonna be an expensive freaking mistake. Un, unbelievable, unbelievable, Unbe unbelievable, unbelievable. Unbelievable, unbelievable. So that brings us to the end of the video. And as always, the question, should you buy it? And I think that for a lot of people, the answer to that question is going to be yes, but not for everybody. Uh, first of all, I have to comment on the durability of these frames. And I'm going to own up to a decision that I made that played into this outcome. But both of these frames broke. And they broke in the, dare I say it, relatively mild crashes that you saw in the flight footage. So the Protec 35 broke here on the outside and the Protec 25 broke here on the inside. Um, the decision that I made that played into this is these guys come with this foam that you can optionally install around the outside of the prop guards. And none of the product pictures have the foam installed 
because it looks cooler without it. And I mean, I guess it's a little lighter without it. And I just went and flew without it because I was like, well, let's see what happens. And what happened is they broke. Obviously, having a little bit of foam padding on the outside is going to increase the durability. However, I got to say, I just don't think this was that hard of a crash. And I'm kind of skeptical that the foam padding would take it from the amount of durability that it's at now to, oh yeah, I could beat the hell out of it because I have absolutely trashed the crap out of this thing, treating this thing basically like a little tiny whoop and just flying it and crashing it and crashing it. And every time it just got back up again because these prop guards are flexible and durable and the props got beat up, but it always came back and it flew. And when you go to a rigid prop guard like this, you just don't have that level of durability. I mean, when you go to a rigid prop guard like this, you have that level of durability because it's just, it's just so much of it. And it's also surrounded by carbon fiber, which adds durability and padding. So I feel like you're giving up some durability when you go to these frames. To be fair, the prop guards are replaceable and they even say you can save weight by taking the prop guards off if you're not going to be flying in proximity to people and so forth. That's your decision to make. Um, I do think that the Protec 35 flies really well. I think that there's definitely a place for a faster, more powerful Cinewhoop. I've seen people, if you're chasing a skateboarder or maybe a bicyclist, then a three inch Cinewhoop can keep up just fine. But there's a point where you're now you're chasing maybe a, a, a downhill mountain biker who's going a little faster, or maybe you're chasing a motorcycle or a car, and suddenly your three inch Cinewhoop is just not cutting it and going up to these three and a half inch props with these more powerful motors. I think it, that, that's definitely where this ProTech 35 is going to fit the best. But for the type of tight indoor environments, flying very close to people or especially flying close to walls or other obstacles, I, f I think that this one is not ideal. You saw the trouble that I had with getting sucked into the wall or bouncing off of things, the motor's revving up because it generates more prop wash due to the larger props. So I think something smaller is going to be better for that situation. As far as the ProTech 25 goes, I think the story is basically the same. It's going to be the right tool for you if you're carrying a lightweight camera like a naked GoPro. In theory, it can carry a full-size camera with the battery removed and powered off the balance lead, but it just doesn't feel like the ideal application. I would probably rather step up to a 3-inch Cinewhoop and then have just a little bit more power. I'm not sure that the smaller size of this really is worth the trade-off in flight time when you're carrying that much weight. But if you are going to be carrying a naked GoPro, going down to something like this gives you just a little bit more maneuverability, get the ability to get through uh, tighter gaps. It doesn't even takes up a little bit less room in your pack. So I do think that this would be a great choice for somebody who needs a Cinewhoop style quad and is carrying a naked style camera. It's worth pointing out that both of these quads are also available in an analog version. Uh, I believe it has a Runcam Nano 2 uh, camera and a iFlight video transmitter. That wasn't what iFlight sent me to review. I just need to acknowledge that they exist though and they'll be in, in the video description if you want to check them out. Now we've been talking about Cinewhoops as if they're being used to like get commercial shots. And that is in fact how Cinewhoops are often used. But I've made the argument that a Cinewhoop is a good choice for a first time pilot. And I know that's a controversial statement because Cinewhoops kind of fly like crap if you want to push them to Acros and so forth. But for a beginner pilot, they're probably not going to be pushing them to acro very hard. They just need to be able to get off the ground, hover, fly around, not crash. And the sheer durability that Cinewhoops bring to the table and the fact that they're a little bit underpowered actually works in the beginner's favor in some ways. I think there's a compelling argument to be made that some people's first quad should be a Cinewhoop. No, actually what you should do is you should practice in the simulator until you get good and then just buy a five inch. But lots of people don't want to do that. And maybe a Cinewhoop is the place where they should start. At least it'll survive. I'm not sure that I would suggest these guys for that scenario. I would actually be more likely to suggest something like the iFlight Bumblebee because of its increased durability. These guys I don't think are going to have the level of durability that I would want to hand to a beginner who's going to crash it 500 times before they start to get good. This one will. 
if you are looking for a Cinewhoop like the iFlight Bumblebee, can I suggest you check out my massive Cinewhoop Roundup. A few months ago, I reviewed, I did an individual full-length review on four different Cinewhoops, including the Shendrone Squirt and the iFlight Bumblebee, and then I did a final shootout video where I picked which one I thought was the best. I'll put a link to that playlist down in the video description. Uh, if you decided that the Protect 25 or 35 are the right one for you, there are also links to them in the video description, and they are affiliate links. And what that means is that when you click that link, and then you go and you make any purchase at the affiliated store, I get a small commission. It's an easy way for you to support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. And you can click those affiliate links before you make any purchase. You don't have to buy this. You could buy anytime you're going to go shopping at one of those affiliated stores. Click the link, do your shopping. I get a small commission. It really means a lot. It's going to do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. Do you see this baby? Isn't he cute? Hit the subscribe button. Join my Patreon. Use my affiliate links. Or just keep watching videos. That's better than nothing. Cuckoo Kaka, subscribe to my daddy.